Today we'll check out the cheapest bench power supply on Amazon and see if it's any good. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts and assembly as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. I needed a new power supply to go out in the garage. I have one on the bench here that served me fairly well for years despite me having to fix it a few times. I thought we'd give one of these cheapies a go. This is kind of the bottom of the line that looks like a decent unit, if that makes any sense. There's lots of other ones available and I don't think they'd be worth checking out. This one's kind of best bang for the buck as I see it. It's still a, a reasonable amount of money. The packaging was ample, it came no damage, it comes with the normal banana to alligator and then it also comes with the spade to alligator too. That means you can put the spade terminal down in behind the binding post while you still have the alligator plugged in via the banana jack on the front. Handy dandy. Typical instruction book, not a lot of value here. Long story short, the adjustments on the front of this unit, you have constant voltage, constant current. You have coarse and, and fine adjustments for your current and voltage. That basically means you can limit the current to any level. You can also cap the voltage to any level. Turn this into basically a battery charger. That's all they are really. They make fantastic battery chargers, to be honest, as long as you know how to set them up correctly. Once plugged in, everything worked as intended. The green LED on the right tells you whether you're in constant voltage mode, which means it's holding the voltage level, or constant current mode, which means it's capping the current and the voltage may still be climbing. Pretty handy. The binding posts seem fine. The rotary encoders feel just fine. The quality of the plastic is nice. It's smooth and kind of just a little bit grippy. Just perfect. It's wonderful. It's nice and skinny. I like that. It means it takes up less footprint on the bench. My other one is about a third wider, same depth. So we'll see what it is inside here. Four screws on each side, get you in, no problem. I'll be honest. I wasn't entirely prepared for what I found in here. This is not at all like my other power supply. This is a far, far higher quality unit than the one I'm using on my bench. Overall, I, I can find very little to fault this thing. The solder connections on the back of the switches and components on the front cover and the back cover seem actually just fine. They're not nearly as shoddy as my other one. Could have maybe used a couple of gobs of uh, glue to hold things down, but eh, other than that, I don't see much. I didn't note the name on these capacitors. I should have looked those up to see what quality they were, but you can tell by the surface mount soldering on this board and the quality and just overall look and feel of this board. Hopefully the, the camera is capturing this. It's good. It it does not strike me as anything like my other unit. The The quality just seems quite impressive. Onto the front cover, this was actually the failure point uh, one time on my other power supply with cracked solder joints, as is the case that you would expect because this is what gets flexed in shipping as well as normal use. This one is absolutely incredible. I see nothing wrong here. Again, maybe a little daub of glue to hold the ribbon cables and the connectors on the board in place, but they didn't fall out, so they truthfully didn't need it. The quality looks wonderful. A close-up look of the through pins is the solder is absolutely fine. There's no cold joints, no crack joints. It looks good. It's not even that that dusty, op dull that you would expect from uh, most lead-free solder. It's actually quite shiny, so impressive. The binding posts are fine. They're just cheapies. I had this actually fail on my other power supply as well. One of the binding posts just fell apart. These ones, yeah, they look okay. Nothing special. And of course, a test on a lead acid battery. We'll see if we can charge it. And sure enough, it works just fine. We can set the voltage up to a reasonable charging level, a little bit, kind of middle of the road here. Give it some amperage and sure enough, it charges just fine. It does exactly what I would expect. 
And of course, we'll throw it on the scope just to see what we're up against for Ripple. This is with it attached to the battery and charging. So this is uh, going to have some filtering effect of the battery meters. Uh, the oscilloscope is AC coupled. And what you see is what you get here. I wouldn't say it's neither good nor bad. Uh, we have what's expected for for on the, one of these power supplies. So uh, for what I do, it's uh, going to be no issue, I don't think. But time will tell. This power supply will be used in my garage for mainly garage projects where I just I just need a power supply. I either need 12 or 5 volts. So I think this thing will be just fine. We'll give it a go. Throw a comment down below if you end up getting one of these or let me know what you think in the comments down below as well. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. Make sure you guys check out my other channel link below too. I do have a secondary channel I publish on every week. Cheers, guys. Cheers, guys.